Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I wanna take a look at Stacks, which is a Bitcoin layer for smart contracts, unlocking the Bitcoin economy. And in the thumbnail, I said, ultimate coin. And in this video, towards the end, I'm gonna explain why in normal Bitcoin maxi terms, this would be considered a shiz coin, but for some reason, it's probably not. Some Stacks 101 here, a Bitcoin layer. Stacks is a blockchain is a blockchain linked to Bitcoin by its consensus mechanism that spans the two chains called proof of transfer. And we're gonna go through an example of how that works with a photo so we can get it. This enables Stacks to leverage Bitcoin security and enables Stacks apps to use Bitcoin's state. It is also a decentralized network and there are many individuals and companies from all over the world that contribute to and build on Stacks. So I'm assuming it is also open source, which is a great thing. They have four unique features here, as you can see. So it's built on Bitcoin, as we said, right? It extends Bitcoin with new functionality, smart contracts. Bitcoin is Stacks secure and robust layer where all transactions are settled and Stacks adds complex apps and smart contracts. Stacks apps can interact with Bitcoin state so you can have an app that uses Bitcoin as its currency. The smart contracts that Stacks uses is different than Ethereum. They use what are called clarity smart contracts and they are designed to prevent bugs common exploits and to proactively protect the user. These are two important ways that it does protect the user. So Clarity is interpreted, not compiled. Clarity code is interpreted and committed to the chain exactly as written. Solidity and other languages are compiled to bytecode before it is submitted to the chain. So with Solidity, there is a layer in the middle. I guess that would be like an interpretation. So let's assume that I speak Spanish and then I have an interpreter that is going to relay that to someone that speaks Russian. You can imagine that what I say may not get exactly translated to what the Russian person might interpret. So there, there could be some things lost in translation. But with Clarity, you don't have that compiling that needs to happen. It's also decidable. A decidable language has the property that from the code itself, you can know with certainty what the program is going to do. Decidability also allows for complete static analysis of the call graph so you can get an accurate picture of the exact cost before execution, which is good for gas. I didn't understand the first half of that sentence, but picture exact cost before execution is a good thing. And then they go on to describe some of the bugs or the attacks that it, 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 uh, it solves against, like re-entrancy and these others. Consensus it uses to tie itself to Bitcoin is called proof of transfer. It recycles Bitcoin's proof of work to achieve both levels of decentralization and scalability without additional environmental impact. So it uses Bitcoin, but there's not more hash power required for stacks to function. Proof of transfer's other half is called stacking, which enables holders of stacks token to earn Bitcoin. That is something pretty cool about this. If you have stacks and you stake your stacks, you do, you could earn Bitcoin. Explanation here, proof of transfer is an extension of proof of burn models where miners compete by burning, destroying a proof of work cryptocurrency from an established blockchain as a proxy for computing resources. And one that comes to mind like this is Coinos, where you buy some Coinos token and then you essentially burn it on the network. So you, you give that up, but then you earn back what you burned plus some. Unlike proof of burn here, however, rather than burning the cryptocurrency, miners transfer the committed cryptocurrency to other participants in the network who are stacking, and they're referring to Bitcoin. This is a graph of what that looks like. So you've got a miner. A miner is going to give up their native Bitcoin to the Stacks network, and they're gonna, they're gonna mine that for the ability to validate blocks on Stacks. When they bring their Bitcoin over, it goes to the stackers. Then the miner writes the block on the Stacks blockchain, and then it's gonna receive the Stacks reward plus transaction fees. As long as what they're receiving in Stacks is more than the Bitcoin they're giving up, then I guess this makes sense. This isn't automatic. Bitcoin miners have to give up their Bitcoin in order to participate in this. So it's not like just because there's ASICs out there and there are Bitcoin miners that Stacks just works. Then we've got SBTC, Trustless Bitcoin Write. SBTC will enable Bitcoin Write, trustless movement of Bitcoin in and out of the layer while securing transactions with 100% of Bitcoin hash power. 
And the way I'm interpreting this is that this is a wrapped version of Bitcoin on the additional layer. They do have something called micro blocks. So as you're aware, Bitcoin is really slow because it's got 10 minute block times, but Stax introduces something called micro blocks, which breaks up the main blocks into smaller blocks so they can have finality on this Stax layer in between the real 10 minute Bitcoin blocks. This obviously would help with scaling and throughput are a lot of dApps being built on here. A lot to go through. I watched a YouTube video on some of what appear to be the popular ones. So you've got Stack Swap, which seems to be like the OG place to do swaps. You've also got Alex, which I believe this is, I heard this compared to Camelot over on Arbitrum. So you can do swaps. Uh, you, you got an order book here if you wanted to trade that way. You can also farm, there's pools. You can also do a bridge. So it's got a Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum bridge over onto the Stacks chain. We go and look at Alex, the ecosystem has $8.1 million in TVL. So it's not like it's, it's not nothing. Another dApp is called Arcadico, which allows you to take out loans in a stable coin called USDA. You can borrow against Stacks, XBTC, and Auto Alex over here. There's not really that much of it though. There's only 1.9 million of this USDA. It's not on coin market cap at all. And if you go over to CoinGecko, it actually gives you this, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So there's probably not a whole lot of volume and much to really track. On the roadmap, they have this SBTC developer release, which is also called the testnet. And I believe this is launching either this week or next week. And then early next year, you've got the Nakamoto release, uh, which will introduce SBTC, clarity language updates, faster transactions, which is good and more. Taking a look at the chart and some of the price and whatnot, it's ranked number 47 on CoinGecko. So it is up there, 55 cents. It has a fully diluted valuation of 1 billion. Current market cap, 782 million. So 78 or so percent of these tokens are in circulation, which is good. It's made it all the way up to $3 at the height of the bull run. So it's down, you know, what about five, six, whatever percentage that is. Still down 83% over here on CoinGecko. This is where I was having a little bit of fun calling it a shiz coin, right? It's because it had a, it launched this token through the SEC in 2019, and it did have a pre-mine of 295 million Stacks tokens, which is about one-sixth of the supply. And it went to the team, early investors, that kind of thing. Just like you hear Bitcoin Maxis complain about with some of the other projects, this one is doing the same thing. So any Maxi that likes Stacks, but doesn't like some of the other projects that are out there just based on the fact that the team got an allocation and they had money, uh, they had to raise money to fund development, just doesn't make any sense to me. So 215 million Stacks tokens went to voucher people, the voucher program at 12 cents. And I assume this was mostly like insiders that were on a, that were whitelisted. Then you had 40 million Stacks tokens that went to qualified purchasers, right? Just a big walled garden for all this stuff. And another 40 million uh, for app mining program. It did go through the SEC, so they should be okay, I would imagine. It's built on Bitcoin, so it's DeFi on Bitcoin. So as long as Bitcoin doesn't fold, then maybe this could do something. I don't know, I hear good and bad things about the Lightning Network, and it, it doesn't really seem like it's growing that much, so I don't know if this layer, if it's just too hard to build on Bitcoin or not. So just one to watch for sure. Another thing to consider too, is if these Bitcoin ETFs do get approved, I would not be surprised at all to see this also kind of go crazy. Because people are gonna feel like, oh, Bitcoin, it's too late, I missed the boat. But DeFi on Bitcoin, what's the leading one of those? And it stacks, ranked number 47. So it's still in the top 50, so, but it still has some definite upside potential. In my opinion, again though, none of this financial advice. What do you guys think of Stacks? By the Bitcoin maxi standards, is this a crap coin or do you think this is a legitimate project? As always, if you're still here, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll see you on the next one.